Okuma Media's Policy, I'm Tabi Shomulikai. Joining me today is researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sadna, here to unpack his column titled Genocidal War on Gaza, Its Support Base, Impact on Democracy and Levels of Opposition, Part 4. So why do you consider it important to name the war in Gaza as, strictly speaking, not being Israel against Hamas? It's convenient for the Israelis to say that they are at war with Hamas because what that means really is that there's another side that they're having to destroy and that's powerful and all of that. Now, I think Hamas has got military capacity, but if you look at what the Israelis have done since October the 7th, is they've destroyed everything in Gaza, more or less. All the religious places, educational places, uh, human beings, uh, especially women and children. And the war is really the war against the Palestinian people in Gaza. And they simultaneously also are having intense conflict in the West Bank, not just with the military involved, but mainly settlers, illegal settlers, even by Israeli standards, it's illegal. Israel's not supposed to be in the West Bank, and they're not allowed to build uh, settlements there. And these guys, these settlers, are militarized, and they've killed a lot of people, and they've expanded. So I think it's very important that we don't allow everything to fall under the heading of a war against Hamas because it gives some sense of, not it doesn't even give justification, but it gives a semblance of two sides fighting. But when you kill boys and girls of five or six years of age or you attack uh, ambulances and things like that, that's not Hamas that you're attacking. You're just attacking human beings who want to go about their lives. You're attacking the places where they used to live because those places are not there anymore. Hospitals, all those things. And many people may consider attempts to stop Israeli killings in light of U.S. backing to be a lost cause. So do you think there is anything to hope for? You see, when you have the backing of the United States, and also Germany. Germany is the second highest contributor to weaponry to Israel. Uh, UK is lower down, but it's supplying significant things. Three very important parts. It seems that uh, not only is Israel powerful on its own, but it's got the backing, the green light from these powers. Uh, sometimes the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Germany says something about this is not good, but they still are supplying all the time. But what is interesting is, which make, means there's not total warfare on one side and no response on the other. The world at large knows much more about the plight of the Palestinians since the South Africans brought that case in December. They also knew from the bombings, because these have been on television all the time. And parties are outraged. And what is significant is that the Democratic Party of uh, Biden, the majority of them want a ceasefire. In the UK, it appears that the majority of the population want a ceasefire. In the US, uh, there are universities having encampments with students taking up the plight of Gaza uh, and the, the New York Police Division, the riot division or the, whatever they call it, of these police coming in using very heavy uh, tactics against the students now the professors and other lecturers have come and joined them. And this is happening all over the United States. And some cases, the university administration have called in the police. 
but in some cases, the staff standing with the students. Now, similar demonstrations have occurred in France, in South Africa, starting off uh, WITS and UCT, if I remember correctly. There probably are others that haven't got uh, into the media that I've been reading. But all over the world, there's never been a war which has made atrocities as visible as has been the case now. There's hardly anyone who can say they don't know what has been done to the Palestinians. Bodies, parts of bodies being dug up from the rubble, mass graves next to one of these hospitals. Um, so a lot of these things have made the world at large very opposed to the Israeli uh, actions, including people who are family to some of those who are still held hostage by Hamas. Uh, now, some of those people have come out. A lot of Israel's justification relates to the Holocaust for some reason. I don't know how, when you commit genocide yourself, how you can be drawing on the Holocaust. But Holocaust... The Jewish Holocaust survivors, a lot of them have come out and said, as a Holocaust survivor, I can survive this. So there's a disjuncture. On the one hand, there's a, an all-out war by Israel against the people of Palestine, in, especially in Gaza, but also the West Bank, to some extent, East Jerusalem. But on the other hand, you've got a high level of consciousness in the world of the Middle East and of the plight of the Palestinians, something that was not before uh, there before, where you see people with um, uh, kafirs and Palestinian flags and saying slogans about free, free Palestine, things like this. This couldn't have happened one or two years ago. So what I think is a problem is you're having everything of the life of these people being destroyed. And if you look at the people who've died, a lot of them are poets. I think that uh, Israelis are aware that amongst the Palestinians, poetry and art is very important. And they've destroyed lots of buildings, housing, artworks, archives, all of that. So there's an outrage, but people haven't found the equivalent. You can't find the equivalent of these huge bombs that the U.S. is giving to Israel to bomb these people. And lastly, Raymond, you argue that the war in Gaza has fed into reactionary, racist and even fascist trends in the U.S. and other states. So please explain that as well as counteractions by students and academics. Uh, the second part of the question I have answered partly, but what I think is interesting is that um, while there have been these encampments of students and staff supporting uh, the uh, Palestinians, uh, the police have come in as if they're dealing with a full-scale riotous type disturbance, used very heavy action, including a, uh, some middle-aged women who are professors, things like this, drag them away. Uh, all sorts of, but all of this is in our faces. It's you, you don't have to watch a television program. You can go to a website, Al Jazeera, or one of these things, and you can see these things. So that um, there's that as well as um, anti-Palestinian groups that have come onto these campuses and attacked the students without the police intervening. The police are, are very partisan and they are not discouraged from being partisan by their police chiefs and people like that. Um, as I said, there are counteractions. And just as they've hauled off people to the police station, others have come to or to prison or whatever it is, 
Others have come to take their places. You see, what is a problem is in some of the universities like Columbia, the new president, that's like vice chancellor, she called in the police. And uh, there's a lot of unhappiness amongst the staff uh, and the students that there was not a proper consultation. But there's a little bit of wavering now and a willingness to talk, but not very much. But um, I think there is a tendency towards racism because very often they go for the black people or they go for the people who are, look like Muslims or Palestinians and they leave the whites. But they actually are bundling in whites, white professors as well. So it's a, it's a very serious setback for democracy in the United States that Biden is so deeply enmeshed in this war in, uh, of Israel and so supportive of it. That was Professor Raymond Sutner speaking to Criminal Media's policy about genocidal law on Gaza, its support base, impact on democracy and levels of opposition at four.